What's your process for approaching dialogue? You know, it's kind of instinctual, I think. Once I know what's happening in the scene, uh, and I know where it's going, like what, where the characters enter the scene, it's all about whose scene is it, what are they trying to achieve in that scene, what's in the way, and sort of what are they doing to try to get through whatever's in the way. That's pretty much the template for pretty much every scene. So then it's like, okay, part of that is gonna be dialogue. Part of that is gonna be what they say. And what they say should be the, the things that they would believably say given who they are and what their unique voice and way of speaking is in that situation given what's going on and what they want. So you want to avoid the mistake that people often make with expositional dialogue where people just speak information that the audience needs to know but they really wouldn't say in that moment. You want them to be saying the things that they would really say. When I'm doing it, it's kind of instinctual and I'm just sort of quickly writing what I have people say and then maybe go back and, and revise it. But what's probably in the back of my mind is it needs to be what they would naturally say given who they are and what they want. And people also don't always just express everything that they want. Right? The best dialogue has subtext, which means the audience can pick up that they're thinking and feeling something that they're not saying, but what they're saying is what they think is the right thing to say to try to like get whatever it is that they want or the, the only thing that they're sort of able to say for whatever reason, given who they are and what's going on. But it's helpful if there's this sense of subtext of we know what the inner life is underneath that, that they're not saying. But what they are saying is hopefully uh, feels real f for that character and hopefully is entertaining in keeping with whatever the genre is. I mean, if it's a comedy, obviously your dialogue is going to often be trying to be funny as well. Um, so, um, yeah, it's not so much of figuring it out as it is just instinctually moving through it with those kind of things in the back of my mind. And then, of course, tons of revising, going back and rewriting and revising, you know, compressing, you know, cutting, editing the dialogue over time. Are there certain scenes that stand out that are great for subtext? It's a great study in that. Well, there, I mean, Robert McKee in his book Story analyzes the scene in, in Casablanca uh, with Humphrey Bogart and uh, Ingrid Bergman where he, he gives you on the page all the dialogue in the scene and then he explains to you what the subtext is. So that's a great, that's like the, the thing that stayed with me the most from that book. It was a really helpful uh, thing. There's that scene in Annie Hall, the famous scene where uh, um, Alvy is at Annie's apartment and he's looking around at like the photos on the wall and he's saying stuff, but then in subtitles they tell you the subtext, <laughs> which is like, you're a really attractive girl, but what he's saying is, that's an interesting use of negative space. <laughs> And her subject is, I hope he's not a jerk like the others, but what she's saying is, oh, really, you think so? So, I mean, it's a comedic you know, thing, but it's kind of sh showing you what subtext is. You think Humphrey Bogart was sort of the master at subtext? Because so, so much of his stuff is like sarcasm and sort of, but th there is like, without saying much, there's a look, there's a, uh, there's a jab in a lot of things. It's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how much credit to give actors for it because really it's in the writing to some extent. You need the, you need the scenes and the characters to be, to have that inner life that's going to be clear to the audience, but also have dialogue on the page that is not exactly what they're thinking and feeling, you know, where you can feel the gap. At the same time, it's a big part of acting, I think, is to know what am I really feeling and thinking because I'm not saying it and what am I saying, and how do I portray what I'm really thinking and feeling to the audience, even though I'm sort of hiding it in a way in my dialogue, or I'm not quite coming out with it in my dialogue for whatever reason, and obviously there are great actors who, who do that particularly well. Do you think certain decades of cinema have more or less subtext? Uh, I don't know about that. I would say that television writing uh, traditionally has tended to have less subtext especially kind of like what we traditionally think of as like primetime network dramas and comedies, usually have a lot of dialogue and the dialogue tends to be a little more on the surface with just saying whatever it is people are thinking and feeling. Although nowadays when we have all these TV shows that are more movie-like and that have a different feel to them, you might see a lot of subtext in the dialogue there as you might do in movies. It's a more, I guess, slightly more like sophisticated kind of thing, which doesn't isn't necessarily present in certain genres. Like if it's an if it's Bruce Willis in Die Hard, there's probably not a lot of subtext. 
right? Or if it's, uh, you know, South Park is not filled with subtext, right? So, but sort of like serious dramas, you know, tend to have more subtext or just, you know, I hate to use like a pejorative that, you know, it's good if you have it and bad if you don't, but to some extent that's true that it tends to be more interesting and involving if we're seeing people who aren't saying everything that they're really thinking. I mean, Fleabag, I don't know if you've seen Fleabag on Amazon is a series that mm-hmm. I recently watched both seasons of and it good. has this great device where this, the main character turns to the camera and like kind of tells us sometimes her subtext. Um, and it says it's running dialogue with the camera, which they did a little bit in House of Cards and other shows have done it too. They do it in their own unique way so that the audience is in on it. She doesn't give us every bit of subtext, but she gives us some pointed looks and moments of here's what she's really thinking, but she's saying something different. And I mean this in, in all seriousness, you think of Bruce Willis though in Moonlighting and it was tons of subtext between he and Sybil Shepard. Right, yeah, it depends on the genre. It's not about the actor does or doesn't do it. It's about the project, yeah. Oh, so you don't think that certain, you think certain actors get more roles in terms of, you know, because you think of Samuel L. Jackson's character and he's so great and everything, but he's just gonna say what he feels, you know, and he's gonna be, he's gonna have this moment where he's gonna have like a little mini meltdown and everyone's gonna be kind of at his mercy and then they're gonna kind of like do what they, he wants them to do. Like certain actors seem to get, seems like more of one, style and the other? I mean, they may get cast in roles that are non-subtexty roles more, I suppose, but I don't know that it's certain actors do subtext and some don't, or some are better at and some aren't. I think it more is a writing thing. It's more, what kind of scene is it? You know, because we're really talking about the scene level. Dialogue is operates on the scene level. So what kind of scene is it? Who, who are the people in the scene and what are the agendas and what are they trying to communicate or achieve? And what are they really thinking and feeling? And are those things gonna be in the dialogue or not? Kind of just depends on the kind of genre and the kind of scene it is, I think. So Aaron Sorkin, maybe less subtext. Gillian Flynn, maybe more with Gone Girl and different things. Yeah, that's a good point. Aaron Sorkin, I think, is less subtexty because he tends to write these very uh, you know, smart people articulately laying out arguments for things. I mean, I think of like the West Wing classically that way. And so, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not subtexty for the most part. It's very come out and say your opinion and argue it with somebody. It's kind of an intellectual, cerebral type of writing, I think, that's engaging on that level. It's entertaining on that level. Um, and I'm not saying that he doesn't ever have scenes that have subtext. I'm sure he does. Like if you look at the social network, I could probably imagine scenes that have a, a lot of subtext. Sure. Um, you know, where, uh, Justin Timberlake's on the phone with, um, you know, Eduardo, uh, and he's saying one thing, but we know what he's really mean. You know, like there's, it's not that Aaron Sorkin never does it or can't do it. It's just the style he's most known for, like from the West Wing. I think you're right, is less subtexty.